The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning program. I am Taso Gerard, your economics teacher for Upper Seat Economics, so Upper Seat Arts Economics. We will start um, by correcting the assignment we had in uh, the third part of lesson two. And this is the assignment. You were asked to study the table or the data below and calculate the following. A, total domestic income at factor cost. B, total domestic product at factor cost. C, gross national product at factor cost. And uh, D, national income. Now, let's uh, look at the table closely. We have, given, we have been given gross trading profits of companies, income from employment, capital consumption, rent, general government final consumption, gross trading surpluses or surplus of government enterprise, gross trading surplus of public corporations, income from self-employment, net property income from abroad, stock appreciation, subsidies, and uh, residual error. Let's uh, look at the solution. We have to start with total domestic income at factor cost. We need to get the formula. The formula of total domestic income at factor cost is the sum of incomes plus imputed charges for the consumption of known trading capital. Sum of incomes. Now let's try to identify we we'll start by the identification of the factor incomes earned in producing the year's output. On the table, we'll see income from employment, which is given as 10,000, income from self employment, which is 1,800, rents, 1,550, as well as profits. On the table, profits here is represented by surpluses. We have uh, 200 plus 600, which is equal to 800. Therefore, our sum of incomes will be 10,000 plus 18 plus 1,550 plus 800, which gives us 14,150. That's the sum of incomes. But remember, our total domestic income and factor costs, uh, the sum of incomes plus imputed charge for the consumption of non-trading capital. But on the table, we didn't have that. So we have, uh, this is a total, this zero here represents what we don't have. That means our total domestic income and factor cost is 14,150 million francs. Since imputed charge for non-trading uh, uh, non capital was not given. So let's continue with uh, B. The calculation of gross domestic product at factor cost. Now, this time we need to take now the total, this is the formula we're going to use. We'll take the total domestic income at factor cost minus stock appreciation plus stock depreciation plus or minus residual error. On our table, if you looked uh, keenly, you discover that we're given stock appreciation, but we do not have uh, 
stock depreciation, and we equally given residual error. So we make use of what is available. So our gross domestic product factor cost here is this 14,150 represent is uh, represents the total domestic income we already calculated minus 650 that represents stock appreciation plus 200 that is a residual error. It's positive because it is um, it's plus because the value we had on the table was positive. If the value was negative, we would have subtracted it. So the final answer that we we'll have is 13,700 million francs CFA. That's the value of our gross domestic product at factor cost. Now let's look at um, the gross national product at factor cost, which uh, we're going to use this formula, gross domestic product at factor cost plus your net property income from abroad. That's plus the net property income from abroad. And the net property income from abroad was given, is given. So take the 13,700, which we calculated already, as gross domestic product at factor cost, plus 1,5 representing net property income from abroad. So our final answer is 15,200 billion francs saving. Now let's get to national income. The national income, which is a gross national product factor cost minus depreciation. Of course, depreciation has been given as 2,700. So we take the 15,200, that is a gross national product factor cost minus 2,700. It gives us 12,500 million francs. That is our national income. Okay, now let's. Um, it's now that we're beginning uh, part four of lesson two. I will be continuing with the methods of measurement of national income. This is our lesson plan. We'll start with the objectives, we'll follow with previous knowledge, go to problem situation. Lesson activity, application exercises, and finally, we'll end with assignment. So let's start with uh, the objectives. Now, this, uh, uh, by the end of this lesson, learners uh, should be able to identify the expenditure method of measuring national income. And uh, they should equally be able to identify the components used in the expenditure methods of measuring national income. Let's get to previous knowledge. Learners can identify some basic concepts of national income. And uh, they can calculate national income using output and income methods. Now, problem situation, we're going to look at uh, a real-life situation, an example of a real-life situation. The mayor of your locality is faced with the problem of determining the monetary values of output produced in his locality. That is our real-life situation. Let's get this question. What should the mayor do to overcome this difficulty? So, by the end of this uh, lesson, we are going to be able to have material or permit us to attempt this uh, 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 answer, attempt an answer to this question, or to permit the mayor overcome this particular difficulty. Now, let's uh, start with the expenditure method. We'll consider the expenditure method of measuring national income. Of course, it examines final expenditures by all economic agents within one year in an economy. Remember, we had earlier seen the output methods. That was uh, measuring the fiscal output of goods and services produced within a period of one year. They were looking at uh, production in the primary, secondary, and tertiary sectors. We equally saw the income methods that uh, was measuring the sum, the rewards, obtained by the various factors of production. This time around, we're looking at the expenses. Expenses. All the expenses in uh, 
getting the final uh, goods and services. Now, we're going to look at the components of the expenditure method of measuring national income. We are going to be looking at um, nine components, to be more precise. We'll start with the first, which is consumption expenditure. We'll look at them uh, detail later. The second, investment expenditure. The third, government expenditure. The fourth, exports. Fifth, imports. Six, expenditure taxes. Seven, subsidies. Eight, net property income from abroad. And finally, the last is depreciation. We're going to look at uh, each of these components a little bit detail, detail. Now let's start with consumption expenditure. What we'll about consumption? We're looking at the personal and household, household purchases of durable and uh, non-durable consumer goods and services. Actually, we exclude new homes. Uh, res residential buildings are considered under investment. So consumption could also be regarded as the act of making use of goods and services to satisfy our current want. The next component is uh, investment expenditure. And we're going to look at uh, two components. There are two components, sub-components under investment expenditure. The first one is our investment in fixed capital. Fixed capital. What are fixed capital? We're thinking of uh, factory buildings, uh, business, uh, lorry, uh, vehicles, and so forth. Now, the, uh, the fixed investment in fixed capital is otherwise known as gross domestic fixed capital formation. And the next part of investment is change in firms' inventories. Inventories are stocks. That's the value of fiscal change in stocks and work in progress. That's how uh, they usually refer to change in firms' inventories. We're going to look at this. We we'll look at the various uh, formulae a bit um, detailly. We'll start with um, the total investment year. I here represent total investment. It equals gross domestic fixed capital formation plus change changes in stocks. That's what we've already seen. Now we need to find out how to calculate gross domestic fixed capital formation as well as changes in stocks. Now our gross domestic fixed capital formation equals net investment plus depreciation. That means net investment is gross domestic fixed capital formation minus depreciation. And uh, depreciation now obviously should be gross domestic fixed capital formation minus net investment. Then our change changes in stocks now represent, the formula is the stocks of 31st December of that year minus stocks of 1st January. Okay, let's now take an example related to the investment expenditure. Now, the following information relates to the national income of an economy. Figures are in million of francs saving. We have gross domestic capital formation, 1,100 stocks on December 31st, 2013, 800 stocks on January 1st, 2013, 1,000. Net domestic fixed capital formation, 900. We are expected to calculate the value of depreciation as well as total investment. Now, before we go to the solution, let's just look at this um, information. We've been given gross domestic fixed capital formation. We have to calculate depreciation. And we are seeing that depreciation could be gotten by getting gross domestic fixed capital formation minus net investment because net domestic fiscal formation is the same as net investment. So you take uh, 1,100 minus 900, that already gives us the value for depreciation. We're going to see that later. And then our total investment here is our gross domestic fiscal capital formation plus changes in stocks. Change in stocks here will take the stock of uh, 31st December, 800 minus 1,000 to get minus 200. We we'll add it to uh, 1,100 to get the total investment. Let's get to the solution. We'll start with depreciation. 
depreciation asset is gross domestic fiscal transformation minus net investment. And uh, gross domestic fiscal transformation was 1,100, net investment 900, which gives us 200 million francs. That is depreciation. Now, total investment now, the formula is gross domestic fixed capital formation plus changes in stocks. That is 1,100. So change in stock here will give us minus 200. We already had that. I, I gave uh, minus 200 because let's just get back to the table. The table, you see that many students will easily take 1,000 minus 800, which is wrong. You must remember to take by 31st. You are subtracting 1st January from 31st December. So that's why I have 800 minus 1,000, which gives us minus, that's why we have a minus 200. Okay, that's why we have this minus 200. Therefore, our total investment, which is presented by IEA, is equal to gross domestic fixed capital formation plus changes in stocks which will finally give us 900 million francs CAP. Okay, let's continue with another example. That Another example still under uh, investment expenditure. The table below gives figures of national income account of an economy. The figures are a million of francs CAP. We have net domestic capital formation, that's 30 million francs. Value of stock, 1st January 1968, 70 million francs. Value of stock, 31st of December 1968, that is 50. Capital consumption, 10. Here we are expected to calculate our total investment, calculate total investment. Before we get to the solution, let's try to look at it. This time around, we're not given our gross domestic fixed capital formation. And we had seen earlier that total investment was gross domestic fixed capital formation plus changes in stocks. But we equally know that gross domestic fixed capital formation is, okay, it could be gotten by net domestic capital formation plus capital consumption. That gives us gross. We're going to see that. So our total investment, that's a formula that we all know. Gross domestic fixed capital formation plus changes in stocks. But in this case, this gross domestic fixed capital formation is not given. So we had to calculate this 40 million. Let me tell you how you got the 40 million. To get the 40 million, we took net domestic capital formation, which is 30 plus capital consumption, which represents depreciation. That gives us 40. That is why we had this 40 million. Then the change in stock, which we calculated earlier, is minus 20 million. Therefore, our total investment is 40 minus 20, which equals to 20 million francs CFA. Now, let's continue with the other components. We have now government expenditure. It represents public authority expenditure on final goods and services, and actually enables the government to provide merit and public goods. Another component is expenditure on export. Here we are talking about the expenditure of foreigners on locally produced goods of an economy. Now, this expenditure Foreigners spend on our locally produced goods. So when we're calculating national income, it has to be added because it forms part of the output of the country. Then we have expenditure on imports. That is the spending on foreign goods, which represents output from other countries. Now equally spend on goods produced by other countries. Now, since uh, those goods are not produced by us, when we are calculating national income, they are subtracted. They are subtracted when calculating national income. We have expenditure taxes. These are taxes levied on goods and services. They are taxes levied on goods and services. 
Now, these expenditure taxes, they, they come in to distort the real value of national income. So they are always uh, subtracted. You have to deduct, deduct those uh, expenditure taxes, so indirect taxes, so that I can move from market price to factor cost. We have subsidies. These are payments made by the government to producers of goods and services. And uh, the aim is really to encourage the production and consumption of the goods and services produced because they tend to reduce uh, the cost of production and therefore permit the firms to sell at lower prices. Now, the presence of these subsidies also tend to distort uh, the real value of output. So, or rather the absence, so they need to be added. They need to be added. Of course, when you add subsidies and you subtract indirect taxes, it permits you to adjust from market prices to factor cost. Let's get to another component, which is a uh, net property income from abroad. By net property income from abroad is the difference between property income from abroad and uh, property income paid abroad. Property income refers to incomes from assets. You know, like in Cameroon, there are Cameroonians that could own probably companies, assets out of the country, and they receive property income. That would be called property income from abroad. And there are foreigners who own assets in Cameroon, where they receive also property income paid abroad. The difference when you take uh, paid abroad, subtracted from abroad, it gives you the net property income from abroad. That is, property income from abroad minus property income paid abroad is net property income from abroad. Now let's get to the last uh, component, which is depreciation. It is a reduction in the value of capital assets over time. That's the way and tell of capital assets over time. Uh, and we know that part of the total output of capital goods required to replace or to replace the absolute or one out capital is also considered as depreciation, or more precisely, it is referred to as replacement investment. So other names of depreciation could be replacement investment or capital consumption. Most often, anyway, we're going to look at this later, more detail in other subsequent uh, lessons. Now let's try to remind ourselves, we recall, we recall what we've done uh, so far. Normally, uh, we just remember that this lesson is centered on the components used in calculating the expansion method. Let's just remind ourselves of those components again. We have consumption, expenditure, investment, government spending, imports, exports, expenditure taxes, subsidies, net property income from abroad, and finally, depreciation. Now we're going to take an exercise. We'll take an exercise, about one or about two exercises. Identify from the list below the components used in calculating national income under the expenditure approach. Now let's look at the component. Wages, we're talking about the expenditure approach. So wages and salaries, of course, that's under income approach, it's not part of it. Imports of goods and services, that's correct, expenditure. Government current expenditure, that will be expenditure. Capital consumption is for all the approaches. Value added in agriculture is output approach. Value of fiscal increase in stocks is expenditure approach, that is correct. Consumers expenditure is expenditure approach. Export of goods and services is expenditure approach. Subsidies is expenditure. And gross domestic fixed investment is expenditure. So this is our solution. A solution you have all this that all this represents uh, the expenditure approach as you can see now let's uh, get to exercise two it's a very short exercise briefly explain the difference between the gross domestic product and market prices and the gross domestic product at factor cost uh, this is a short difference the main difference is that the gross domestic product and market prices gives the market value, monetary value of goods and services, 
while the gross domestic product at factor cost, it gives a real value of output. But real value is usually me measured in terms of constant prices, while the uh, market value or monetary value is measured in terms of the current uh, prices existing in the market. Now, we're going to have, you're going to take this assignment. It's an assignment that you take for our next uh, lesson or session. Use the information below to answer questions A, B, C, and D. Figures are in billion or franc CFA. We have the net domestic fixed capital formation, uh, 60 billion. Value of stock, 1st of January 2016, 80 million. Value of stock, 31st of December 2016, that's 50 million. Property income paid abroad, 30 million. Property income from abroad, 20 million. Expenditure taxes, 10 million. Subsidies, 8 million. Depreciation, 10 million. So these are, these are the questions. Calculate the following. A, change in stock, gross domestic fixed capital formation, total investment, net property income from abroad. So that's the end of this particular uh, session. The next session is going to still will continue with the measurement of national income using the expenditure approach. Manetambia ninja ne injubia yen 